So let's start this question off by drawing a force diagram. We have a uniform rod AB of mass 2m. The rod has a length of 2a, so that means that the weight force acts in the middle of the rod, and the weight force is mg. We then have a particle of mass 2m attached to the rod at point C, where AC is equal to 1.5a. 2mg, okay, so let's put some distances on. It's a uniform rod, so the weight force acts in the middle. The total length is 2a, so this length will be a. AC is 1.5a, so this will be 0.5a. And so with this, making a total length of 2a. Okay, and then we're told that the rod rests with its end a on rough horizontal ground. So we will have a friction force on the ground. The normal contact force goes upwards. I'll call that r. And we have the rod being held in place with a string that pulls on the rod at point B. So there would be a tension force here. And we're told that the string is perpendicular to the rod. We're also told that it's in equilibrium. So that means there is no resultant force and no resultant moment about any point. So if we take moments about any point, the overall clockwise moments and anti-clockwise moments should sum to zero. And there's no resultant force meaning upward forces equal downward forces, and forces to the left equal forces to the right. And that brings us on to part A, which is explain why the frictional force acting on the rod at A acts horizontally to the right on the diagram. So it's basically saying or asking, why is the frictional force acting towards the right? Well, that's because if the system is in equilibrium, there must be no resultant force. If we look at the tension force, the tension force has a horizontal component. It has a component of force towards the left. The only other horizontal force or force that has a horizontal component is friction. So to counteract the horizontal component of the tension force, the friction force must act towards the right to cancel out that force of tension or component of force of tension towards the left. Okay, on to part B. The tension in the string is T. Show that T is equal to 2mg cos theta. So what we can do for this is we can take moments about point A, do clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments, and when we simplify that equation, we'll end up with T is equal to 2mg cos theta. So let's first identify which are the clockwise moments, which are the anti-clockwise moments. So the force mg and 2mg, they will both have clockwise moments, if we start from where the force begins, follow along the arrow, and then go around the pivot, we see that we are going clockwise. Similarly, for the tension force, start where the force acts, follow along the arrow, go around the pivot, and we go anti-clockwise. So then, we'd be doing the moments of these two forces added together would equal the moment of the tension force. The moment of mg you'd have to do force multiplied by perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance would be, we'd have to consider this triangle here. The hypotenuse is A. This is the right angle. The base, which is the perpendicular distance to this force, would be A cos theta. So it'll be mg times A cos theta. And then we'll have the same kind of thing for this force here, the 2mg it'll be this force multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is this. And that length there would be 1.5a times cos theta. You can get that by just doing Sokotoa with this triangle. Same thing for this triangle, just do Sokotoa, it's a right angle triangle. You'll end up with this length here for this triangle, this length here being 1.5 cos theta. So the 2mg would be multiplied by 1.5 cos theta, 1.5a cos theta. Those are the clockwise moments. Set them equal to the anti-clockwise moments. That'll be t multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is just 2a. t is perpendicular to the rod, so we just times that by 2a. Okay, a's cancel out. And then we're left with 2t is equal to mg cos theta plus this, 2 times 1.5 would be 3, so 3mg cos theta. 
the right hand side will end up being 4 mg cos theta divide by 2 and we get 2 mg cos theta okay that's part b done on to part c given that cos theta is equal to 3 over 5 so let's start off by drawing a little triangle this would be the adjacent 3 the hypotenuse 5 Sokotoa cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. That would mean, using Pythagoras, that this length here is 4. And then we can say that sine theta, which is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, would be 4 over 5. We probably don't need to work out what tan theta is. Usually sine and cos are enough, so I'll just leave it at that for now. So part C says, show that the magnitude of the vertical force exerted by the ground on the rod at A is this. Okay, so that basically means we're trying to show that R is equal to the 57 mg over 25. Easiest way to work this out is to do upward forces equal to downward forces. So if I draw a line up here and across there, this would also be theta. I'm actually going to move this T as well. I'm going to move that T to the left. So this will also be theta. And if you're not sure why, consider drawing a line down here. This is a right angle. Considering the triangle that we have here, this would be 90 minus theta. And then consider that all of these angles add up to make 180. And that must mean that this will be theta as well. Okay, so using that triangle at the top, we can say that the vertical component of tension is T sine theta and, no, sorry, t cos theta, and the horizontal component is t sine theta. So then, the upwards component of tension plus r should equal to the two downward forces if the system is in equilibrium, which it is. So r plus t cos theta is equal to mg plus 2mg. So let's write that down. Okay, we know what t is. t is equal to 2mg cos theta. So then r plus 2mg cos theta times cos theta again, so squared, is equal to 3mg. Cos theta is equal to 3 over 5. So cos squared theta would be 9 over 25 times that by 2. That's 18 over 25. And then just rearrange. If you were to do 3 minus 18 over 25, you would get 57 over 25. And that's part C done. For the final part, for part D, the coefficient of friction is mu. This is between the rod and the ground. It's in limiting equilibrium, meaning that the frictional force is equal to mu r. It's on the point of sliding. And we're trying to show that mu is equal to 8 over 19. So. Doing a similar kind of thing, but now considering the horizontal forces. So generally for these kinds of moments questions, or ladder questions, you want to form three equations. Your first will be a moments equation, and then you'll have two other equations, one which is upward forces equal downward forces, and the other is forces to the right equal forces to the left. Now there might be some slight variations in that, depending on which directions you're resolving forces, but that's the general idea. One moment's equation, two forces equations in perpendicular directions. So upwards, downwards, for instance, or parallel and perpendicular to the rod. We've already done a moment's equation. We already have a vertical forces equation. The thing we haven't considered yet is forces to the right equal forces to the left. And that will help us work out what the frictional forces, because we know that mu r will be equal to t sine theta. Those are the two horizontal forces. So mu r is t sine theta so 57 over 25 mu mg just replacing the r with this is equal to t t was 2 mg cos theta times sine theta and then we know that so 
So I'll cancel the MG's first of all. This will be 57 over 25 mu is equal to 2 times cos theta times sine theta. And then we can just simplify. So 5 times 5 is 25. So these two will cancel out with this 25. I can also divide this and this by 3. This becomes 1. This becomes 19. So we end up with mu is equal to, so 2 times 4 on the right is 8. Bring the 19 over, 8 over 19, which is what we wanted to show.